not 31, 73. All right, so 73. So it says that a gas sample is collected at 16 degrees and 0.982 atmospheres. If the sample has a mass of 7.4 grams and a volume of 3.96, find the volume of the gas at SDP and the molar mass. Well, I know a pressure, I know a volume, okay? So PV is equal to NRT, but because I'm giving grams, which form of this? So PV is equal to grams over molar mass RT. But is that gonna get me to STP? I mean, I have two different things, right? So the first thing I wanna do, I think the easiest thing to do is just calculate the molar mass. What is molar mass equal? Molar mass is grown over PIV. So we can just plug in the 7.40 grams, 0.0821 liter atmospheres, kelvins, moles. The temperature is 16 degrees, so you add 273 makes 289. And the pressure is given as what? Atmospheres, atmospheres. It's already in atmospheres. Yes. 0 0.0982 atmospheres. So we just plug all that in. And the volume. Uh, and the volume, which is uh, how much? 3.06 Because it's GERD over PIV, not GERD over P. Yeah. So you plug all that in to your calculator. What's the molar mass turn out to be? 7.40. Uh, 45.2. 45.2 is a more realistic number. <laughs> oh, I know what I did wrong. I went ahead and used Okay. So atmospheres cancel, kelvins cancel, liters cancel, leaving grams divided by moles, which is molar mass. Now, now I have one set of conditions and they're asking for the volume at a new set of conditions, SDP. So what law do I use there? That use the combined gas law of P1, the initial pressure is 0.982. This is the second part. 0.982 atmospheres, P1, times initial volume of 3.96 liters. P1, V1 over T1, the initial temperature of 289K is equal to our new pressure. What's standard pressure? Yeah. One atmosphere. We're looking for the new volume, V2. And what's standard temperature? 273. So to solve for V2, the 273 comes up here. The one atmosphere, which is kind of moot, comes down here. So V2 equals this times this times this divided by this divided by that. How much? I said 22.4. Yeah, I thought it was because of the standard temperature and pressure. It'll always be 22.4. Only if it's one mole. Oh, one mole will occupy 22.4, but 7.4 grams isn't going to be one mole. So we just divide, do all this out, So when you have two sets of conditions, anytime it says what's going to be at SDP, given one set of conditions what's going to be at SDP, you're probably going to need to use the combined gas law. Now, we could have used the molar mass, okay? We know molar mass, we know GERT, we know G, we know R, we know T, the, uh, 273, you know one atmosphere, you could have solved for V, okay? Actually, it probably would have been easier to start here, solve for V. And just plug that in. 
once you got that. I mean, there's, so there's another way to do that with ideal gas law. Again, you just use this form. We just calculated the molar mass. So now we know G, we know molar mass, we know the temperature at STP, 273, we know the pressure of one atmosphere, so we get the volume of STP, if you wanted to do that. All right, so that's 31. Let's just keep working, I mean, pardon me, 73. Let's keep working backwards, 72. How many moles of helium would it take to fill a balloon to a volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters? So we decided that's how much? One liter. When the temperature is 32 and the atmospheric pressure, again, we're given one set of conditions. You're mentioning moles. So the question is, how many moles? So N is equal to PV over RT. So the, the pressure is how much? 0.9 or 0.99. Yeah, because so the pressure... And how did you get that, Sam? I do four, or 752 divided by 760. Divided by 760. And what did it come out to again? 0.989. Okay, so we have to convert it to atmospheres if we're going to use R. So that one you just kind of do separately. 0.989 atmospheres. The volume is 1 liter. R is always 0.0821 liter atmospheres, Kelvin moles, and the temperature, 305, so moles equals 0.4, but how many sink pigs do I have? I have three, I have four, I have three, I have three. So my answer should have three. How many is that? Two, three, one. One. Three. Zero's at the beginning of a decimal are not significant. So the three sig figs, what is this? 0 0.0394. 394? Mm-hmm. And that's moles. We always need to label what our answer is, what unit. So 71. 71. A gas sample has a mass of 0.993 and it occupies 0 0.5700. Given that the temperature is 281 and the pressure is 1.44, what is the molar mass? So again, we redo the, we just know molar mass is equal to whatever what? Gert over PIV. Gert over PIV. Just having you say it so it gets into your head. So the mass is equal to 0 0.9, I don't have glasses on, 0 0.993. 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres, Kelvin moles. And again, R will always be given to you. You do not have to memorize it, although I think we've used it enough to where you'll just know it. The temperature is how much? 281. They already gave it to you in Kelvin. And the pressure. I heard two different things. 1.44. And the volume? 0 0.570 liters. Okay, so the molar mass? 27.9. Do we agree on 27.9? Okay, so this is still the ideal gas law. We just rearranged it. Okay? So we get another dirt one from that. Uh, I mean, if you can just plug in this over this for. So that's technically, how did you? Any of those? Yeah, it's all the same equation. It's not five different equations. It's five versions of the same equation. So yeah, you can start with any. And 
169. Suppose 3.11 mole of carbon dioxide is at a pressure of 8.82 <coughs> atmospheres at a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius. What is the volume? Now this time we have moles, we have pressure, we have temperature. So the volume is going to equal nRT over P. We just plug in. You guys call out how many moles? Uh, 3.11. R is always 0 0.0821. I'm not going to put the units for the sake of time. What's the temperature? 312. 312K. Divided by the pressure? 0.812. 820. 820. That's close. So the volume turns out to equal 97.2. And that will always be liters with the ideal gas law. Can you see the difference between the combined when you do use the combined gas law when you use the ideal gas law? Okay? One set of conditions versus two. All right. We have some stoichiometry. We've got to do stoichiometry problems left to do for this unit. Um, no, not, not today. <laughs> no, so we're running out of time today, okay? But we're not done for today, okay? But what we have left is stoichiometry, which is going to be, you know, um, kind of a combination of stoichiometry and the ideal gas law. I, and um, I need to teach you uh, two more kind of laws. We're going to do that right now. terms diffusion and effusion. <laughs> I remember hearing them. What, what is diffusion? The escape of molecules through tiny openings is called diffusion. That's effusion with an E. Okay, what's diffusion? No. You're, you're really warm. I keep going. No. The no. natural spreading out of one substance through another is called diffusion. That's right. The natural spreading out. So again, if you open a bottle of perfume in this room, it's just going to naturally spread out. Or if you have some like fingernail polish remover or something that's real strong odor, or you burn popcorn in the microwave, the whole house ends up smelling like burnt popcorn. Yeah. Okay. It's the natural spreading out. So what do we know? Big molecules or slow mo or, uh, small molecules are going to diffuse faster. Small. If you have a big mass, you ain't going fast. Okay? So small molecules. So Graham's law of the effusion and effusion. In layman's terms, big molecules effuse and diffuse more slowly than small light molecules. Now, Graham gets credit for this because he did the simple math. Two gases at the same temperature. What does that mean about their average kinetic energies? They're the same. that kinetic energy of gas 1 is going to equal kinetic energy of gas 2. They're at the same temperature. Now, does anybody remember the formula for kinetic energy? One half mass of gas 1 times the velocity of gas 1 squared, 1 half mv squared, where v is the velocity, the speed, 
is going to equal one half the mass of gas two times the velocity of gas two squared. Did we learn that this year? Well, I've mentioned it at the beginning of the year that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. It's energy of motion. So you got to be have a speed. If you have zero speed, zero velocity, then you have no kinetic energy. Okay? So you can see that here, if we're going to compare the masses, if these two things have to equal, if M2 is greater than M1, what does that have to mean about V1 versus V2? There's more velocity. There's, V1 has to be a bigger number, right? Because they have to equal another. So if this number is smaller than that one, this number has to be bigger than that one. Because they have to equal. So just doing a rearrangement, the one halves are going to cancel out. So M1 V1 squared is equal to M2 V2 squared. Collecting the M's and the V's. M1 over M2 is equal to V2 squared over V1 squared. Take the square root of both sides. M1 over M2 is going to equal V2 over V1. So we can use the mass, we can say the molar mass of gas 1 divided by the molar mass of gas 2 is going to equal the rate of gas of V2, the rate of gas 2 versus the rate of diffusion or e of gas one. This is Graham's law right here. The rate at which the gases are gonna spread out are inversely proportional. Notice there's a swap, gas one down here, gas down here. So that makes it inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass. Practical application of that. Helium has a molar mass of four grams per mole. CH4 has a molar mass of 16 grams per mole. So obviously, which one's going to spread out, effuse, defuse faster? Helium. Helium. How much faster? Well, it's proportional to the square root of the molar masses. So if I take the square root of the molar mass, the square root of this is 2. The square root of 16 is 4. So even though it's four times heavier, it's only going to be two times slower. So we can always just compare the rate based upon the molar mass. But whatever one's on top here has to go on the bottom. They're opposite. One on top, one on bottom, two on bottom, two on top. Doesn't matter which one you call gas one, gas two. I always put the smaller one, smaller gas is gas one. Um, and therefore, uh, the rate comes out to be a whole number. All right, so that's Graham's law. Okay, so question number one says quantitative, pardon me, 56, says quantitatively compare rates of effusion for the following pairs of gases at the same temperature and pressure, hydrogen and nitrogen. Hydrogen H2, nitrogen N2, comparing the rates. Well, what's the molar mass of hydrogen? 1.01, so this is gonna be 2.02 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 14.01, so it's 28.02 grams per mole. So to compare, we just say the square root, and I'm going to go 28, I'm actually going to do it backwards of what I just said, over 2, is equal to the rate of hydrogen compared to the rate of nitrogen. So 28 divided by 2 obviously is 14. 14. 
four, square root of 14 is, somebody just real fast on a the calculator, then we're going to go to lunch. 14 squared, square root of 14. Three point seven is equal to the rate of hydrogen compared to the rate of nitrogen. Okay, so in other words, hydrogen is going to diffuse and effuse three point seven times faster than the nitrogen will. That's very important.